I think I was born in a football family. My mother's brothers, they played for Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. I remember I was still playing for an amateur team. We played against Orlando Pirates. We were getting hammered, I think it was 6-0 at that time. And I scored the only goal for my team. John Osona came to me and whispered to me, he says, you're a good football player. The future is bright. I want you to come and play for my team. It was a big moment for me. I never slept. He brought me to football. My first Premier League match, I was an assistant. The coach was just let go. I had to step in. And I was playing against my mentor. But all I told myself is, you must follow your heart. Do you believe you can do it? Do you believe that you can win against all odds? And we won 1-0 on that match. What a start. We have a family business. My manager is my wife. My daughter is doing Pizza Musimani Soccer Schools to help the community and develop football in the country. And they're building my legacy to build the player of tomorrow. You have to leave the jersey at a better place than you found it. In life, we all have different strengths and we all have our different talents. You have to do what you love most. How about that? Football is about delegation, it's about leadership, it's about communication. And people think a good coach is a coach who's got the tactics right. Sometimes on those big games, tactics don't play. It was so close, but this is football. It's a heart and soul. How much do you want to win? And it takes more than talent because of the mentality, the will to win, the edge. No success without setbacks. People are afraid to jump. People are afraid to go to the next level. They're afraid to fail. Your failures are sharpening you to be successful. I'm banking with NetBank. I just followed my father. And now my daughter is with NetBank. It's just loyalty. No one has been successful without help. And that's why we have NetBank. Those are the people who've got passion for these things. Join the bank. That's best for your money. Well, I'm definitely convinced, making sure that I'm going to put my money into NetBank. And, you know, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for our roundtable discussion. Uh, we were all together at Gonka when we launched this wonderful campaign with Coach Pito Musimani. And I think ever since that launch to see that he has continued to climb those strides and continue to fly South Africa's flag shows that those small decisions that he made and we talked about on that day certainly pay forward to the big decisions and big changes that he's made for himself. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's, I think there's the proof. You know, yeah. Everything has been said there was in pictures as well. And as we speak, um, just um, congratulations to Coach Pizza for winning the league title there. Again, maybe that was a small decision to him, yeah. uh, or a big decision, we don't know, um, joining that team, but look where it brought him today. Yeah, and, and Stiga, you know, we, we obviously have the NetBank Cup campaign, and this season it's all about those small decisions that really do pay forward to your big decisions at the end of the day. We were speaking with Coach Pito Musimani about how <laughs> players and purchasing of vehicles when he was still a coach and those small decisions. Coming from that discussion when we had Coach Peter around and, and seeing how the small decisions have impacted your life, can you elaborate on those? Yeah, I think there's, there's so many aspects. Oh, first and foremost, good morning to everybody. And um, yeah, first and foremost, just to, to, to elaborate on, on those small decisions, you know, um, the lifespan of a footballer, it lasts, if you're fortunate, 16, 17 years. Mm -hmm. And within that, you've kind of lived a full life. And in many aspects, in life and football, it's the small decisions um, that, that turn out to be the big ones at the end of the day. And I think in everybody's space, um, if it's your career, it falls over into your financial um, space as well. Because if your finances is not good, you're not good. You like it or not. It's not the all, but it's a, it's a necessity 
to be stable financially, and I think we can all attest to that. If you're a family man, even if you're a bachelor, um, you know, you need to make strides, and those decisions come early in one's life. And, and the message that I want to give is, is what I've taken on board. And yes, I've made mistakes along the way. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. I've, I've made the wrong decisions many a times. But the, but the right ones was to remain conservative and make the right financial decisions that would affect the performance on the field eventually, you know. So um, in terms of the smaller ones that I did mention is that you have a vehicle, um, you can't afford it, you're thinking of buying another vehicle. You're playing in Europe, there's no need for a vehicle in South Africa. But because when you come home, you, you need to show that you've played in Europe. You know what I'm saying, Peko? <laughs> He's laughing, but it's the truth. And these are the decisions that you make, and you say, listen, I don't need this. Um, those small things, it's, you can invest in a, in a car that's 700,000 Rand, and it's going to depreciate. You know? so, so those little decisions, um, fortunately, I made those decisions with a sober mind. And I, I never repeated the mistakes I did. And uh, the coaches um, are very close to Dane as well as Teco. Mm -hmm. I played for, uh, for Pizzo just for six months. Yeah. But immediately you understood that this is a father that has traveled a road and whatever he's overcome, he's trying to put it on to, to everybody else. And I can see Dane shaking his head and Teco as well because he was, he was uh, this is a very strong word. In fact, maybe I shouldn't use it. He was <laughs> <laughs> a helicopter dad. Let's just say it was a torch on top of the guys, especially if you want to spend and you come into that parking lot. Um, yeah, Brighton, you're smiling. <laughs> if you come into that parking lot with a new vehicle, because he knows how much you earn. Yeah. And he knows, is that affordability? Is that the right decision? So um, uh, thanks to him. And um, whoever's listening, if this reaches other players, you know, those small decisions make the world of difference. Teko, Teko's lucky there wasn't drones that time. <laughs> And, and, and Donna, you know, watching this wonderful campaign that uh, Coach Peter and Netbank put together, uh, what stands out for you that you can see with Tia? That is a moment that uh, really speaks to me between myself and Coach Peter. Good morning, everyone. I think um, there's a lot, actually, that I see from Coach Peter that um, now that I see in myself. And also the things that he was fighting me for when I was young, because I think I'm one of the players that he fought the most. Um, because of him trying to be a father, trying to be an uncle, trying to be an advisor, and uh, not traditioning. So I don't. I, I really wanted to do my own thing because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. I think um, what I've seen myself in Pizzo is he. He's a. He's a winner. He wants to win. And. Uh, whether in life or in a football game, but he wants to win. And uh, he does whatever it takes for him to win. And he works hard. Um, he's one of the coaches that I know that he doesn't sleep. He will tell me about the game that he was watching at 4 a.m. So it's, it's insane of the, the amount of work that he puts in. And when it, come to, when it comes to me, it's the same thing. For me, it's all I know is to work hard. Even, even when I was still a footballer, I used to work hard. Not knowing that you know working hard it actually helped me play better, but it's just mm -hmm. that from vacation and you grow up knowing that you need to train a little bit harder. And also, I never believed that I'm I'm one of the best players from where I come from, so I needed to even work even harder to to surpass with Benedict Villegas, with Timilita Mabalandara mm -hmm. from my same hood. So that's that's one of the things that I see in him, and and he continues to do that. He continues, like you said earlier on, he continues to fly the South African flag very mm -hmm. high. And wherever he goes, I think he likes project. He's one of those guys that <laughs> likes project to start from scratch and, and make something out of nothing. And, um, and uh, yeah, we're very proud to see that. And, and you know, um, Deco, I think everybody here who's a member of the media knows that um, all your trials and tribulations were well publicized, magnified, those small decisions that you made, well publicized in the media, financial downfalls and so forth. And you've written about it in your book. What are the small decisions you feel that you've made to be where you are today financially? Uh, I think for me it was, um, at the time, it, it felt like it's a small decision, but in hindsight it was a big one. Uh, me letting go of all the material things, um, downscaling from a big house to a smaller one, from three cars to one. And, and at that time, also, um, I think I wanted change, but I didn't know where to start. My game was, 
was 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 perfect on the pitch, but my lifestyle in per, as a person I was mm. more depressed, the more I was the most unhappiest, and and I thought that all these material things would actually fill the void of being unhappy, and downscaling those actually helped me to find myself and helped me mm. to actually like myself and love myself because I always trying to please everybody else but myself. And at the time, letting go of all those material things, um, uh, it, was a, it was a small decision at the time because I knew that I could afford so many things. But in hindsight, it became big because of that's how I left my mm. life. I lived my life after that, uh, getting rid of three cars, having one. Because the mentality of a footballer is you need to have a car for the weekend and for training <laughs> and the family car, which makes no sense at all. And uh, because, uh, because I saw other footballers that I admire doing it, yeah. I thought it's the right way to do it. And until you find yourself, um, I think that's when you start making all those decisions, financial decisions as well. You know, um, going, I've always shared this even with the media, I've never played for any team that I had to sit on the table with the chairman or whoever to discuss about my salary or how much am I going to earn? I've never. I've always signed contracts without knowing how much am I going to earn because I wanted to play the game because mm -hmm. of the opportunity. And I knew that my time is so small because I came into the PSL, I think I was 24, 25, so I wanted to maximize on that. So for me, it was never based on the money. But once the money is there, because you never get education for it, you tend to do other things that pleases you, forgetting that um, uh, you've got a short career. But thank God, mm -hmm. with all the mistakes that I've done, um, um, I was able to recover from those because I still had a little bit of time to actually come back and play football and within that decision actually helped me to become the person that I am today. And, and, and you know, I love the fact that yourself and Stiga have spoken about something that we know all too well. A football career is too short. But how do you then, Dane, mitigate the shortness of your career and really wanting to have those three cars? Because when you walk out of NetBank headquarters, uh, we need to be seeing you in a nice car that sounds really nice. But how do you mitigate that as a footballer, young footballer in South Africa, knowing that it's short and the money is coming in? I think, like, like Stiga and Tico, I think I've also learned a lot. Made a lot of mistakes along the way as well. Even being a family man, you know, you, you end up only three houses at one time, you know, which maybe you could have focused on one only. You know, so those are those are the kind of decisions that, that, that we talk about and then and, and also the other thing about and I always mention this is living the now versus planning for the future. Because um, living now is important as well. You know, tomorrow is not promised, that's the other thing about it. So do you enjoy it, you know, do you travel, whatever you're making, you do you live properly. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would go on holidays with the family and, and those are the type of experiences that uh, that can't be bought again. You know, so when you do those type of things, you know, um, I think uh, you feel that you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like I'm saying, living the now, you want to drive. We, we all have dreams and aspirations, you know, and, 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 when, and the minute you're able to, to afford what you really want in life, you know, you, you tend to go after it, you know, um, and not thinking maybe I should have that when I'm 45 or 50 years old, have a 10-year plan on having such a luxury. And that's the lessons I've learned along the way. And uh, like Teco, I started with Coach Pizzo from a very, very young age. So I was taught good values about investing money from a very, very young age. I was able to go through that. Obviously, everybody makes mistakes along the way, but I don't think I will, I will know now if I didn't go through the struggles and the tribulations throughout my career as well, and post-career, the transition. You have to plan, plan ahead for your transition as well. It's difficult, you know, but um, I think everybody goes through difficult times and um, there's always time to recover. That's the one thing, you know, there's lots of examples. Yeah. You know, you can recover if you want to recover, you can always recover. But it's all about, again, that, that small decisions you make that makes a big difference in the end. And because, Dan, you work a lot with uh, young upcoming footballers and you see them, um, are they receptive to the financial advice that you do give them? Um, the, 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 the small nuances where you say, uh, perhaps save here, do that. Are they receptive to that? Do you find that that's the... I, I don't think so. I think it's still there's still a stigma that if a financial advisor comes to you, he wants to take your money. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was in that boat at one stage. You know, where you've never met a financial advisor in your life, and all of a sudden you get introduced to someone, and only, only the only thing you you ever know, and the only thing you can think of is this guy wants to take my money. <laughs> you know, so I think in in that regard, uh, it it becomes it becomes a bit difficult. But I think a book like Teco's book should be in schools. Then mm. you know why not? 
uh, have a syllabus? Why not have Teku's book? I mean, we when I was in, in high school, I was reading Maru and those type of things, and <laughs> unfortunately, I can't relate to that, you know, but there's a book of Teku, it's out there. You know, those are the books that should be in schools, and we should be then making a subject and writing exams over that book, yeah. and then that way we then learn. And, 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 and you know, Stiga, listening to what Dave is saying, there is no way for us to mitigate unless you've got former footballers chatting to the younger footballers. But what do you think is, is the biggest, biggest problem right now that we have with football and finance that we do find with our players? Yeah, that's a good question, Tato. So um, if I had the opportunity to speak to a current player, um, there's, there's certain financial principles that you only learn later on, once you're mm -hmm. retired. Uh, but it, if, if I were to, to advise them on something, it would be, um, and in any walk of life, anybody, for everybody here, it's don't spend money you don't have, you know. And I think that's the mistake footballers do because you, you sign a professional contract and you assume that you're going to play for 10 plus years. You only have a two to three year contract. So spend that money. Your budget must speak to your current contract which is a maximum of three years, you know. So if I had that opportunity and I had to start over again with the knowledge that I have now, mm -hmm. I would live within the contract and that term. Because if it's a three years and I'm earning X amount, um, my experiences should speak to that, that contract that I currently have. I cannot foresee that, no, I'm going to play in Europe. I'm, I'm in a national team. I will earn the euros or, or the dollars times 20 and, and X and Y. And so... Um, I think that that's the, the piece of advice that I'll give them. You know, Stig, I've also always wondered, because I do know that you've got a son, and he does have an interest in sport as well. What are the financial conversations you're having with him, with how he should prepare himself for the future? Yeah, I always tell him to respect money. Um, and at the same time, I, I have to be honest, I, I illuminate the fact that money is a necessity. You know, in all walks of life. It's not the main thing, it's not the only thing, but if you don't have money, a lot can go wrong. Yeah. They say no money, the love goes out the window. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> Secondly, um, you, you want to enjoy your life, you want to do nice things, so it has to be um, a necessity in your life, whatever you work and strive towards, understand that you need to respect it, because it can open up doors for you. Um, so, so that's the message I drive to him. I said, whatever you decide, yes, you're playing football, you have to study. So he's, he's studying and playing football. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever choice of career you're going to make, understand it needs to be lucrative. But then behind that is the passion. If there's not the passion, nothing is going to be successful. Mm. Well, I'm getting a lot of advice here. Um, Donna, if you had the opportunity to also have a chat with young footballers that you always have a chat with and looking at your life and the current situation, what's the one thing that you think that footballers are making a mistake with with regards to their finances today? It's, I'd say that it's the lack of respect of money. I think in a sense, Yaori, um, you always know that you're guaranteed at the month you're going to get paid. So therefore, you can do whatever you want, and then come end of the month, you start again. It's just a cycle that goes on and goes on. And um, and like the, the guys have said, I think uh, the, the lack of education in terms of savings, because um, you find a guy that's wearing a tailored suit come to the club and speak about finances, you get to that defensive mode that Dana said. You're thinking that this is the person that's going to take my money, uh, because it's not a familiar face. And uh, as ex footballers we try to have those type of conversations. They are very uncomfortable conversations with the players because uh, nobody wants to tell you how much they earn. But yet again, when you speak about money, they're always trying to hide because they think, they're thinking that your time is done. So the, why you want to tell them what to do with their own money? And it becomes a very difficult conversation, but we try nonetheless. Um, the importance of it, like I, I can't emphasize enough on what the guys have said. It's, it's just also the difference is learning how to start early. I, I do that with my kids as well. Okay, at times I get pissed off because they don't <laughs> listen, but it's, it, you can tell that it's something that you need to teach all the time. You, you teach them how to save money, but you need to give them money for them to be able to start yeah. saving money. You teach them at an early age, and we grew up not having that type of a structure where you need to be taught at an early age. And when, But that's why when it comes to football, when now you're a 21-year-old, you've never had such an amount in your bank account, all of a sudden you have it and there's no education behind it, it becomes a problem as to how you, you're able to spend in it. And also you have 
other guys will come and tell you you can afford to buy a G wagon, not understanding the how much money you need to pay for it and for how long. You don't know all this type of things. So because of also the system as well, I don't think for players as well, the system is there for to protect the players or to help them as well. So it's up, up to the individuals of the players to make sure that they they they're able to sustain their lifestyle after football. They're mm -hmm. able to leave, they're able because they, they grow up, you get immature, you've got kids, you've got family, so you'll be able to be able to sustain those. That's a difficult part because you're thinking that like Stiga said, you're thinking you're gonna play forever. At some point I thought I was gonna play until I'm thirty nine. And and I am thinking that I, I still have time to recover, mm -hmm. not 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 understanding that within that this this ex, uh, contract do expire. You're getting all the teams get rid of you. You're changing clubs. The salary goes down, and all the type of stuff. So you don't you don't pay attention to those because you always think that you mean to do it until it happens. So my advice to young to the young players or the players that are currently playing is is respect the money. It will respect you back, and don't spend don't spend more than what you have, mm. and make sure that whatever that you have, at least twenty percent of it, try to save. Mm. Don't touch it. You know, you need to have multiple savings. And and uh, it's about on rainy days when you know that when it's tough times and you can you can tap into it. But save the other one that you don't have to look at it. You know that it's gonna help you out once you've retired. And I think it's 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 gonna be an ongoing conversation that we need to emphasize more because it's we've seen how um, our footballers how the cycle have affected so many footballers as well. So I thank Jeanette Bank for giving us this opportunity to drive the message and I hope this not a message that's going to end here. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's not only a message for footballers but everybody who's here because I've made some really bad financial decisions and I've learned from them uh, but you would wish you hadn't made those mistakes but hey, we are here now and you've actually learned from them. Yeah. And I think with uh, the NetBank Cup campaign that we have for this season and seeing that Coach Beto also made small decisions in his life, could have been a DJ, could have been an accountant. Dave, what do you think you could have been had you not been a footballer and actually taking time? I know you could have been a cricketer, uh, but when it, when it comes to sports. Yeah, no, it's, I was very good in accounting at school. So ah. I would have definitely gone that route. Some of my friends that I was in school with and grew up with uh, are accountants at this point in time so and nice even with the counting you still made some financial mistakes i can sit, at the, table, I can sit at the table with him and we can discuss accounts <laughs> <laughs> nice and stiga for you you know before i uh, played professional football i actually worked for liberty life for six months really yes i was a a um a underwriter a okay. policy underwriter and i was planning to study so i think if if uh, that break we we are went down to Mull Park and watch the 17 national team play against England, where I see the likes of Dylan Shepard, Jopi Motali, that really inspired me to chase this dream of playing football. I think I would have been stuck with a, a fairly stable job me? at Liberty Life. It's a good I company. see you, I, I yeah, see you in that so. position, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Donna, for yourself? Hey, Tato, I, I always wanted to be a footballer. Um, I never had any ambitions of becoming something. Uh, but the reason being is I've seen guys that I was looking up to as a way to that were smarter than me in the class. But after passing and whatever, they still stay in the hood. They stay in the corner. So for me, I realized that I don't want to be that guy. You know, I wanted to be something else. I wanted to have opportunities to come out of the hood. And, and at that time, the only opportunity that was given to me was football. And um, I mean, I, I, I've said it so many times. I think when I was 16, 15, I started practicing how to do an autograph at 15 years old. Wow. And uh, I was so obsessed with the game. I also, at some stage, I told Stiga that uh, I banged school to go watch them train when they were playing uh, Four Nations Cup at Orlando Stadium. Wow. They were training at 9 o'clock. And my teachers are looking for me in the class. My school back is there, but I'm out watching trainings. And that's how obsessed I was with the game. Yeah. Um, uh, that's the only thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to be a footballer. Even if it's one match for me, or uh, my dream would have came to, I just always wanted to be a footballer. That is absolutely beautiful, Donna. Nice. Yeah. I know, had I not been here, I would have been a marine biologist. But that's not the story <laughs> for today. And of course, we have the NetBank Cup campaign. You are our NetBank ambassadors, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride for you to be with NetBank through the NetBank Cup campaign. And of course, seeing that this is a competition where it is a David versus Goliath, Guiana Cup competition, <coughs> seeing teams like Sukuna United going through to the final, what does it mean for you to be with the wonderful Green Bank? No, I think it's been a fantastic campaign once again. Uh, again, there's a Dondal Stars similar to the Morocco hey. story back in the day. Uh, hopefully we see them back in the league. They look very organized, they look well coached. 
you know, uh, that's what you want to see in the game, you know, when you see potential like that coming through. And I think that's what the Nedbank Cup is there for. You know, uh, they had a fantastic run knocking out Supersport, Tamazulu, uh, taking Pirates, who's in the final, all the way to, to penalties. You know, so again, you know, it's been fantastic to be part of this, having won it myself twice with Pirates. Yeah. You so, through, um, <laughs> I think everybody knows where my money is going to be this weekend. <laughs> Thanks, I'm going to be using your tips. And Stiga, for you, uh, 2023, absolutely fantastic. 16 years of celebration of this wonderful competition. What stood out for you? <sighs> to be honest, first and foremost, to be part of um, the ambassadors that on um, this panel, including Coach Pizzo Masimani, speaks volumes. Um, so I enjoyed the, the interaction, first and foremost. And then, as Teko mentioned, it gives you the platform just to have a bit of a voice. And uh, with all the platforms that we have available now, it's not only the newspapers back in the day, it's the social platforms where these messages that we are sharing with could land on the ears of, of, of current players, you know. So I think that's a special part. And now being part of this NetBank um, campaign, you just it just highlights how this is a, a, a tournament for the smaller teams. And I know Orlando Pirates uh, fans will not be happy with that, but it has a history of smaller teams winning, and, and that's the beauty of this cup. It, it has the beauty of something that Teco can attest to, is that when a smaller team when, uh, has a player that's dreaming of coming up against um, a Saleng mm -hmm. or a, a, a Temba Zwani, you know, and, and you get that opportunity, and we actually seen that first hand with Dondal Stars because I managed to commentate the first game nice. when they overcame Super, Super Sports Sport. United. And just chatting to the guys, like, um, that's the magic of football, and that's the magic of the Netbank Cup that really comes to the fore, um, that gives these players the opportunity. Donald Stars will now want to continuously play in the net bank go really far. Uh, I saw that Orlando Pirates fans were not too happy with you talking about small teams. <laughs> Don't up for yourself. What stood out uh, in this campaign as we head to the final this weekend? I think uh, what stood out for me, Tato, is um, seeing the type of football that has been played in the second tier. I mean, it's, it has improved a lot. Um, when, if, if if you get into your, your house and you watch the game uh, without seeing who's playing, you wouldn't differentiate which one is the smaller tier. Or, and because of the type of football, the quality of football that has improved a lot, there's a lot of good players uh, being given this opportunity by an European Cup. And also, it's not a trophy that is easy to win. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I've, I've lost so many times before I actually won it. And also, it comes back to what Stiga said. You you have this player that are playing in the second tier that, are, that have ambitions to play in the PSL and they're inspired by so many current footballers to, to be in the same field competing against them inspires you more. And, and I think this is what this cup brings into the table to give those opportunities to those boys and to be able to inspire more. And you see what, how Don Dollar played. They played like they, 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 they're in the PSO already. The bravery, you know, the, the arrogance on the pitch, and that's what you want to see from these teams. And, uh, and for me, I think it's, it's, it's a team that stood out, not only because it is, it, 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 you know, they played against Supersport, they want to play against Amazon, but the manner that they play. Uh, and, and also the Kazuk as well, Kazuk Stars as yes. well. I think they played beautiful football. So there's a lot of teams that actually played. And uh, and for for us as, as, as pundits, as, as, as commentators, um, it, became, it becomes more interesting because now it's even on the pitch. You know, um, even though it's David versus Goliath, uh, we know how the story is. We know there's a team on the other side that always gets to be beaten by... <laughs> um, at the Davids, uh, but it's the story that it's the story that continues. It's, it's, it's just a beautiful game. That's how it is. It's, it it continues. So there's a there's a there's a tournament that uh, there's no therefore on the pitch. You you're entitled to anything. Anybody can beat anybody, and we've seen that so many years. And and for me, the the, the fact that the story still continues, I think uh, I'm, I'm impressed by it. I'm impressed by the performances and the teams, and I just hope, like Dennis said, Don Doyle can come into the PSL and display the type of football that they're playing. We need such teams. We need footballing teams in the PSL. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you mentioned something how uh, it didn't happen at the first bite at the Cherry, but finally you managed to win the coveted Netbank Cup trophy. What does it take to win that trophy? I bet a lot of people are listening. What, what does it take to win the Netbank Cup? I think... <sighs> Luck, luck. Yeah, <laughs> because I'll tell you why. You have a first fixture against Dondal Stars. You know nothing about them, and at the first twenty minutes, you realize that 
actually uh, today is going to be a tough day. So even even because they they know that they're going to match you because they've prepared mentally for you. Um, um, it becomes a challenge to the players, especially when you 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 the favourite to win. It becomes a challenge mentally to be able to to match the, the second tier team because they come yeah. physicality. It's it's unmatched. Mm. You have to run with them, and yet again they're not going to give you space because they want to prove a point. It's very difficult when you play against a team that wants to prove a point. So it becomes a very difficult thing to win. But then it becomes a little bit easier when you play with your PSL teams because you know each other very well. You know the strengths and the weaknesses, but when you're playing an unknown, it becomes a very, very difficult thing. The reason why I'm saying a little bit of luck because at some stage we'll go on every season thinking that because we're good, we're going to win. We never won. Even when we're supposed to win, we never won. We lack that little bit of luck. And like I said, I've lost in the final, and I know the pain of losing in the final, and I also know the joys of winning in the final, how difficult it may be because and throughout the, the competition itself, you meet in different teams with different standards, different type of mm. uh, play, and you need to adjust to that. And with Mamri Sanaz, we were able to do that. And when we won it, trust me, I, I, I think I was, it's, I think if not winning the league, the, the second most difficult trophy to win is in that big cup for me. Huh. Wow, wow. And in fact, you're taking me back to last season's NetBank Cup and how difficult it was for Mamrudi Sundowns to break through uh, Mahomo Kevin. So that is proven testament that this competition is not easy. Uh, and Dane, for you, um, having basically won every single accolade that is available here in South Africa, how special is it to win this one? We won it in 2014. It was a difficult year for us. We lost four cup finals before that. We in the internet final, we lost. We the Telkom knockout final, we lost. We the Champions League final, we lost. So eventually we, we lost the league as well that year. So eventually we won, we ended the season with the Nedbank Cup and uh, it was a relief winning the Nedbank Cup. And I think it was somewhat special because it was the last trophy I won with Pirates. Um, so I, I think that season particularly, you know, it was our saving grace because uh, purely because of all the cup finals we, we've lost. But the we Nedbank Cup last came we through. won. Is it yeah, or you know? like Yeah, you yeah. know, he said we Orlando Pirates. You heard him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he said when we. <laughs> and, it was, and it was Super Sport also. <laughs> and yeah. was Super I think it was 2005. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the funny thing, right, Stika, that it almost feels like deja vu because we're on the cusp of a final this weekend. Uh, for Orlando Pirates, it means a lot as well where they could then, of course, win this final trophy available. But then there's also Babina Noku, who you must not underestimate, who are in the final for a reason. And they can, as we've seen the TS Galaxies, we've seen the TTMs, Free State Stars, win the title. And all of that is on the table this weekend. Yeah, what a, what a mouth-watering um, uh, match-up. Yeah. Because Orlando Pirates, obviously, if they, if they manage to win this cup, that will be two cups and ending in second position. And in any place, in any league, anywhere in the world, that is a successful season. But then they're up against the Sekakuna United that just confirmed their top eight status. It's a side that um, really, they were busy in the transfer market. They brought in a lot of experience um, and it's starting to bear fruits now. Mm -hmm. We could see they overcame in the semifinals a, 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 a Stellenbosch that is fearless, mm -hmm. that is quick, that is fit, and uh, it takes a lot to stop that Stellenbosch as Sundowns came to find out in the quarterfinals. Um, so by no means is this currently David versus Goliath, because the Kukuna has, has showed their stealth, they showed their experience, they've got a consistent back four, um, and uh, it's all there for, for Orlando Paris to break down, and uh, they're in good form, so I'm, I'm expecting what a, what a, what a final, what a matchup. Oh, I can't wait to get Maftas on Saturday. We're going to be there and looking at how exciting it's, it's really put out to be. Uh, but other than the football, and Tabi Sam also did mention that, as always, every single cup final, we have a wonderful concert. Last season we had Mafiki Zolo, this time we have Heavy K. So it's going to be a whole day packed with so much action. What are you looking forward to come the weekend? Um, I'm looking forward to see um, stadium being packed. Because I think when when the fans are there, it actually helps and inspires the player to be even better. Because we want to see the good football. It is a final, of course. Um, the entertainment, of course. So we know when you're playing a final as a football, when, you, when you're out on the pitch to warm up and you see all the festivities around, it also reminds you as to the occasion itself. 
and uh, and I'm looking forward to, to that. I'm looking forward to seeing the players how they walk into the because for me I, I look at the Brady language, I look at who smiles, yes, who's more serious. Yes, yeah, yeah, I look at all those things, and and that actually tells me how the game is going to go. And I think it comes back to what Steve has said. I think it's a final that uh, one team is on form, one team is very stable. Stable in the sense as Kukuni have been trying coaches, players in and out. Once they became stable, they became a very difficult team to beat. You can see now they're in the top eight, you can see now they're in the final. And they're rolled as well to the finals, not by penalties, penalties. They also beat teams that are very, very good. And they come into this final very, very comfortable and very confident that they can actually manage to, to grab a win against the London Pirates. And the London Pirates, yet again, they have a team that is so strong on the day they can beat anybody. And they come into the final, they want to conclude the successful season that they had. The way, especially how they started this year, mm -hmm. you know, in the second round of the season, they became a better team. They became unbeaten, I think, four or five games in a row. And uh, and they come into this game knowing that um, you know they want to win this, and I'm sure the fans will come through. So I'm looking forward to a very very entertaining game, but also seeing also the fans being packed there and um, coming early so we can start the game. <laughs> and, and and yeah, I'm looking forward to the final. And, and you know, I love the fact that you gave us that answer, Deco, because it leads me to my last and final question for all of you: What small decisions? Can Alanda Pirates and Kukune make <laughs> leading up to the Net Bank Cup final, which could make big, big millions of changes in their lives after the Net Bank Cup final? Donna, go ahead. Yeah, uh, small changes. Uh, because small the, decisions. Small decisions. Um, it's, it's very difficult to, to do that when you're playing a cup final because yeah. uh, not. Uh, not many teams um, get a chance to play in the cup final. So I've seen teams coming into the cup final. All of a sudden, the lineup has changed from all from all the players that have been playing in this tournament. Um, and at times, you look at it in hindsight, you say maybe it's it's, it's a small decision, but it becomes very big because it impacts impacts the game very differently. So I'll say to 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 the teams, uh, the small decisions that they can make it keep keep the same team that has been doing well. I have the same players that knows that fought for the team to be in the final. Let them be the one that goes onto the pitch and, and participate. <sighs> I hope the coaches are taking notes. We will be having the coaches come through later. Stiga, small decisions that could make or have a big impact on the two teams who are finalists. No, it's not a decision, <laughs> it's a fact. Okay. Take your chances because there won't be many. Ah, okay. All right, I'm looking at the goals scored by the Tupacation. <laughs> and for yourself, then? I don't think you, you don't sleep well. You, you sleep late, you up early, you, you know, so just, just play the moment. No, play every the moment, moment. Every moment as it comes, play that moment. Not maybe you sleep earlier. No, don't change anything. <laughs> sleep whenever you want to, just make sure you have enough water and you've eaten properly. And that small decision, just play the moment. Every moment as it comes, you play it. All right, I will be taking in uh, those small adv pieces of advice from the three of you, and I'll try and prepare accordingly uh, for the NetBank Cup final on Saturday. Um, so, of course, these are our NetBank Cup ambassadors for this year. I'm going to open it up to members of the media if you've got any questions uh, for Deco, Stiga, and Dane. Uh, later on, of course, we will also be engaging with the Gauteng Provincial Government. And the third part of our presser today is, of course, uh, with the coaches of the NetBank Cup finals, that is Amanda Pirates and Tuvuk. United. Um, any questions for our panelists this morning? No? <laughs> <laughs> I have no question if the soon you'll eat. <laughs> okay. Um, well, gentlemen, that is how we end off our roundtable discussion. Thank you so much for sharing the small decisions that you've made in your lives that have big impact. And uh, I really love the fact that you also talked to the NetBank campaign by Coach Peter Musimani here this morning. Really do appreciate your time and see you on Saturday as we close off this year's Kiona Cup campaign. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Super. Thank you.